As I covered in my last video on the subject, Intel's Core i7 8700K 8th Gen processor has more cores for you to be able to kick a lot of butt when it comes to gaming, streaming, megatasking, and the like all at once. And I've discovered some pretty neat things I can do on this processor for streaming and for background processes and such that I haven't normally been able to do on other hardware that I've tested. So in this Intel sponsored tutorial, I'm giving you my top five tips for optimizing your game stream on the Intel Core i7-8700K. Stick with me. Useful tech education and gaming nostalgia that won't put you to sleep. Get subscribed and turn on notifications so you won't miss the next guide. I'm Eples Fox here to make tech easier and more fun back with another Intel tutorial and an OBS tutorial. We will be focusing on using OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, which is a free streaming program in this video, but most of the principles I'll be covering will actually apply to pretty much any streaming program you want to use. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I don't want to waste too much time. First, we're going to talk about CPU usage presets, which is a setting that you may have ignored or not known a whole lot about on the X264 encoder. This setting allows you to basically control, in a sense, what the quality or perceived quality of your video is. You're probably used to hearing quality being discussed as bitrate. Higher bitrate equals better. But if, when you're live streaming, you can only go up to a certain high bitrate. On Twitch, you can only go up to 6 megabits per second for audio and video together, which is pretty low. So you can actually improve your quality quite a bit there by lowering your CPU usage preset, which is basically how long the processor spends encoding your video for live stream. That's a pretty high level overview of how it works. Now, by default, you're probably set to very fast or super fast, which allows you to live stream really, really, really quickly without too much performance hit, but you get a lot of blocky artifacting and some weird quality issues. Whereas with something like the Intel Core i7-8700K, where you now have 6 cores and 12 threads to work with, which is plenty for gaming and plenty for live streaming, you can go in to the, your encoder options and set CPU usage preset down to very or down to faster, fast, medium. I actually got in one game, I got it down to slow. Although there's kind of diminishing returns once you get past medium, so I'd recommend leaving it on medium. Uh, but faster, fast, and medium, you're going to start to notice, like uh, if we start out the live stream here at super fast, you can see all the different artifacting, and then we go down to fast, looks a little bit better, then we go down to medium, it looks really, really good, and if you can get it down to slow, as someone pointed out in my live stream in the last video, you might even convince someone you're actually just watching a video instead of a live stream. It's kind of neat. Now, if you do still need some help in the performances department to make this happen, you can actually open up your task manager and go to the details tab and change processor affinity, which is which CPU threads your process is utilizing, because on the 8700K you have 12 of them to work with. You can actually tell your game to only use 6 or 8 threads instead of all 12, which will still give it more than enough power to run most games. Like in Overwatch here, it had no problem handling it. It actually ran better for whatever reason when I limited its affinity than when I had it using the whole CPU. So I limited Overwatch to six to eight threads and then let OBS use all threads for encoding. And that meant I had zero performance issues, even dropping down to slow while encoding the stream at full 1080p, which is kind of neat. Tip number three relates to which resolution you should be choosing. Ch typically, a lot of people either default to 1080p, which is okay, but I generally disagree with the default, or they adopt the more common mentality, which I have helped pr to promote myself, which is you s record at 1080p and you stream at 720p because of the lower bit rates that you have to stream at. And I, I generally always recommend that unless you can do what we started with, which is lowering the CPU usage preset. I pretty much never, unless you're doing like static, very slow, barely moving games or desktop streaming, I never recommend streaming at 1080p because lower bitrate at lower resolution is going to look better than the same bitrate at higher resolution. But if you're able to kick it down to medium or slow or something like that where the encoder is producing a much more higher quality video, you can stream at full 1080p or maybe uh, one of the more common options is 1440 by 810 or 1600 by 900 which is close enough to 1080p to where you still get readable text, nice looking visuals, but you also still have a decent looking stream. 
For tip number four, of course, I recommend to stream CBR. This may seem obvious to many of you, especially since Twitch specifically demands CBR, but not everyone does it. A lot of people want to stream with VBR. This, of course, refers to how the encoder handles the bitrate, and you will see uh, the, the setting as CBR, which is constant bitrate, VBR is variable bitrate, or uh, constant rate factor CRF or CQP. There's a lot of different options. You don't need to know what they all are, but for streaming specifically, you should always be at CBR, which is constant bitrate. This makes it a lot easier on your processor and your graphics card and your computer on the whole to live stream a consistent bitrate no matter what. It doesn't have to fluctuate with the game or anything like that. It's just always going at a constant pace, which is going to improve performance a lot and help smooth things out on most streaming platforms. Lastly, tip number five here, if you do want to record while you live stream, I recommend leveraging hardware encoding, which means letting your processor run as much as possible for your streaming and for your game and whatever you might have going on in the background, but then leveraging your graphics card to record a higher quality recording. That way you don't just have the lower quality stream copy to work with if you want to edit up highlights or upload it to YouTube or do something like that. You can leverage your graphics card, such as NVIDIA's Envink encoder, which allows you to use pretty much per no performance hit recording on your graphics card to record super high quality video that you can go way beyond any streaming bitrate to get a nice quality, nice little recording here, which winds up looking a lot better. So that's a rundown of my top five tips for game streaming on Intel's Core i7-8700K 8th Gen processor to get the best performance and quality balance with some stuff that I've learned that you can really pull off with this six core, 12 threaded beast of a processor. I've been very impressed. There's been some neat stuff you can do. And here's how to optimize just on a kind of more higher level overview. If you want to get super technical or in depth with OBS, I of course do have an OBS master class available for free up on my YouTube channel, playlist linked in the description down below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much to Intel for sponsoring this tutorial. Subscribe. For more awesome tech content, go check out my unboxing of this awesome beastly cyber power rig with the 8700K inside, and I'll see you in the next one. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it donor box, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind the scenes looks at videos, Go to eposvox.com slash support to learn more and join us on Discord at eposvox.com slash Discord. Thanks.